Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. You can be seated. I'm going to have another 30 minute preacher. And uh, we have Brother Hoffman come give us about 30 minutes. I have never heard him preach, but Brother Hoy says he can. I mean, Brother uh, Owenby. Owenby introduced him, invited him down. I appreciate Brother Owenby doing that. And he was up there for a while with him and that area. And, the Hoffman's the ones who had the Bible. You might be. But we'll find out, won't we, brother? <laughs> no. No, just about 30 minutes of light to come on. Back there in the back. Appreciate you being here. Thank you. Well, he's really taking a chance if you don't know this Hoosier. Uh, I want to thank you for the accommodations you have. It's really nice, especially for a little farm kid raised in Indiana. We know a little bit about basketball. So, in fact, I got to play about two and a half hours this afternoon. So that's kind of nice. So it's beautiful scenery when I drove down. Just beautiful. And I was thinking the beautiful scenery that you have is a result of God destroying something. Can you yeah. imagine what it's going to be like for him yeah. yes, amen. just creating it? Yeah. That's something. In Indiana, the mountains we have are called viaducts. <laughs> so that's for sure. I feel like a t-ball kid who's asked to play college baseball right now. But uh, that's what I feel like. But I was raised up there in Indiana, just a farm kid, and uh, we were Dutch Reformed growing up, and I'm really thankful to the Lord that I was predestinated not to be a Calvinist. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I got saved. If you ever talk to a Calvinist, that's the zinger. It will stop the conversation. And if they're adamant and they want to throw you in the Arminian camp, just say, well, I rejected of that of my free will. So. A witness to a hard shell Baptist lady up there. I thought I'd try something different, and I asked her when she got put in Christ. She said, before the foundation of the world. I said, you don't look that old. It, it, just, it really worked on her. She... If you go across the street and ask my son, he'll, he'll, but it was predestinated not to happen, so oh well. Uh, 1 Timothy chapter 2, I want to give you something that will help you stump anybody on the Bible issue, say J.W. Mormon. You don't have to know a whole lot, all you have to know is how not to be deceived. Yeah. I've been up there, you know, 30 years, 32 years in one church and 22 and a half in another. I've been doing both churches for 22 and a half years, and it's been a real blessing. One of them is a Seventh-day Adventist church, so we have church on Saturday and one, and then on Sunday and the other. <laughs> so, no, I run all the services, you know, on Sunday, so I haven't gotten a speeding ticket yet. So 1 Timothy 2, verse 13, For Adam was first formed, then Eve, and Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived was in the transgression. Chapter 4, verse 1, Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. And that entire, that entire chapter is about deception. Verse uh, 16, he wraps it up with this, Take heed unto thyself and unto the fundamentals. Yeah, come on. Uh, yeah. come on. Oh, and unto the doctrine. Continue in them, for in doing this thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear thee. Save thyself from what? Deception. Deception. Yeah. Verse 1. Yeah. Chapter 6, verse 20. O Timothy, keep that which is committed to thy trust, avoiding profane and vain babblings and oppositions of science falsely so-called. Yeah, I have a couple of signs that I use out down on campus, and it says, evolution is a false religion. Oh, yeah, do they get upset with yeah, that one? <laughs> amen. But it is a religion. Yes, sir. 
So I want to spend some time on the idea of deception. It's been worn so many times in the Bible, and anybody who's been in the work for long enough, it's very, dis it's very disheartening to see people who are deceived. Well, I graduated with from Bible school spells Israel today, C H U R C H. Man, you flunk spelling class. But uh, the reason why God has so many heresies is to prove our sincerity. So don't get mad about all the heresies. That is God's way of seeing how sincere we are. It's a very unique thing. But uh, some, some errors are very easy to figure out because you can just take the level and put beside it and see if the wall is crooked or not. Yeah. Amen. Uh, some deception is like identical twins. I had a couple of friends in junior high as identical twins, and I, I figured they got tired of hearing somebody say, are you Tim, are you Tom, are you Tom, are you Tim? So I studied them, and I figured I could tell them apart from the back. And I knew exactly who I was dealing with. In college, there's Tim and Andy, and two, two different fellows. I did the same with them. There are some errors that are so close to truth that truth is stranger than fiction sometime. And in this day, it's easier to deceive people than to convince them they have been deceived. Yeah. Yeah. Right. But in the Bible, you'll find the devil's first, uh, dispersed throughout the Bible, but there are two times where he is in action. There are two times where you have a play-by-play -play account of the deceiver, the master deceiver trying to deceive somebody. In, in, in the first account is the beginning of the Bible when he tried to deceive Adam. The second account is the beginning of the New Testament when he tried to deceive the last Adam. Neither Adam was deceived, but Eve got deceived. So if you go back to Genesis chapter one or chapter two and three, I'm going to look at these two these two close encounters of the first kind, of as far as the devil is in action. Now we we'll see him throughout the Bible, but we don't see him in action. One is at the beginning of the Old Testament; the other is at the beginning of the New Testament, and it gives us a line of defense against deception. Now I know, I realize that most people are deceived because they want to be. It makes them feel self-righteous. A Baptist brighter, he's a brighter because it makes him feel more righteous than somebody else. Okay, so if you would go back to Genesis chapter 3 and let's see if we can figure out this first line of defense. And this one runs uh, back from the Bible all the way through, but then, Genesis, and then Luke chapter 4 will be the second line of defense because we have to uh, upgrade it because more revelation has been revealed. Genesis chapter 3, you'll see that the snake in the grass shows up, and God heard it through the grapevine that uh, they had uh, Eve ate Adam out of house and home. And so this mean as a snake rascal there, um, he comes to Eve, and it says, if you want to look at the original, go back to chapter 2, verse 16. This is their original King James Bible for Adam and Eve. Very small. It's like the book, book of Ethics written by Hillary Clinton. Yeah. All blank pages. Yeah. So, Genesis 2.16 is the Bible for Adam and Eve. Yeah. Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it, for in the day that thou eatest thou shalt surely die. Let's see how Eve does that. Now, either Eve wasn't paying attention or Adam didn't give her the message her well. Okay, so we're going to see three things. This is the first line of defense. You watch anybody that shows you with the Bible, you watch them. The best drivers are defensive drivers. So you watch them when they read it. Okay, she said, we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. Go back and go back and look. What did she do wrong? What did she leave out? One word. Not a big deal. One word. Thou shalt commit adultery. <laughs> that was Bill Clinton's mouth. He'd take not out. Okay, and so freely. So the first thing is somebody took a word or words from the Bible. Yeah, amen. Now, read what she says again as we keep reading. Now, remember, this is a sinless woman in a sinless environment who had a pure motive to be like God. That's not a bad motive. 
Okay, and then, it, okay, she says, But of the fruit of the tree in the midst of the garden, God has said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it. Did you read that in chapter 2? I didn't read that in chapter 2. So, she took a word out of the text, the word of God, and now she added something to it. It's like the Catholics add purgatory. It's like the Campbellites got to splash water in Romans chapter 9. They got to throw in baptism in John chapter 3. Okay? That's adding something to the Bible or subtracting something from the Bible. And then what does she say? Lest you die. Now, is that what God said? So here's the three things. Somebody adds a word or words to what God said. They subtract a word or words of what God said, or they change the words of what God says. That's the first line of defense. That's not hard. A lot of times when you deal with people, let them talk. They run their battery out in about three seconds. They don't know what they believe. Let them talk and try to bring them under conviction. Okay, and so there's the first line of defense. Now, if you weren't a Bible believer, I'd have to go on a different route and, you know, chase this rabbit about the Bible. Yeah. Okay, but we won't do that. Okay, because you are. Praise the Lord. So we can go right to the second line of defense, Luke chapter 4. So remember, there's two encounters. One is at the beginning of the Old Testament, trying to deceive the first Adam. One is the beginning of the New Testament, trying to deceive the last Adam. Yeah. Luke chapter 4. <laughs> Here's our two lines of defense, and this will work. This will take care of 99% of the deceptions that you're going to do. I mean Bible deceptions. I'm not talking about some of you tell, sell you a bad car. Okay? I'm talking about Bible deceptions. Okay? And it's really, it's not tough. It's not hard to do. When I say the Bible, I mean one specific book, like the ball, a particular ball. Is, that means present tense. So that means I got to have it in my hand. Okay, Luke chapter 4 is the next one. Luke chapter 4. Okay, so this is the one for the New Testament. Luke 4, here the devil shows up, going to tempt the Lord Jesus. And here's the temptation. If thou be the Son of God, command this stone to be made bread. Is it a sin to make a stone bread? What's wrong with that? He turned water to wine, right? He said he can make these stones cry out. I don't really see a sin. Now, I know he's being a smart aleck if you be the son of God, but yet the actual act, no sin in that. So what's going on? I can't really figure it out there. Let's go to the second temptation. He says, uh, the devil take them up into a high mountain and showed them all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. And he said to him, all this power will I give thee in the glory of them, for that is delivered unto me to whomsoever I will I give it. Okay, so what's he doing? He's offering all world kingdoms. Is that wrong? Is not Jesus Christ going to have all the world kingdoms and the sooner the better? Boy, the sooner the better. Yeah. I don't get it there. Now, it would be wrong to worship him. That's the wrong part. But the actual giving the world kingdoms, uh, there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah, amen. In fact, he's going to get them. Yeah. Amen. Man, looking forward to that day. Yes, sir. Amen. Well, let's try the next temptation. Okay. Uh, then he says this. If thou be the son of God, cast thyself down from hence, for it is written. Oh. The devil's quoting Bible. Yeah. Let's see how he does. If you take Psalm 91, verse 11 and 12 and put them side by side, you're going to see he added a word, subtracted a word, and changed some words. Yeah. <laughs> That's what he did in Genesis 3. It's nothing new under the sun. So he says, he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. He's telling them, step out from the temple. Okay, um... The creator, the creator who creates the natural laws of life can overthrow his law or overrule his laws of life and he could float. Yeah. Could he not? Yeah. 
what would be wrong for Jesus Christ to jump off the pinnacle of the temple when he can defy density means that something is lighter than air, it goes up like helium. Something, the molecules are tighter, it goes down. He walked on water. The only water I've walked on is ice and snow. Okay, so I don't get the sins going on here. Granted, I see, okay, I see worship, not that, I see that. But you see what this is in verse 10? That's a satanic translation. It's not Anton LaVey's Bible. He didn't take as much out as the NIV revisers did. Isn't that something? It's an amazing thing, uh, that satanic translation. I was reading a health book one time, and they, they put a little quote in there, and ye shall be as gods, and they put Bible. I'm thinking, wait a minute. Why didn't they put Lucifer? Because he's the one who said that. Yeah, that would not be good in a health book. Or, you shall be as gods, Lucifer. Yeah. It's kind of hard to sell it, sell it yeah. when you got that. So yeah. they put Bible in there. Yeah. That's weird. So, okay, what's, what is the issue going on here? What is our second line of defense? Okay, well, if we go with, of the three, which one where we can really settle down on is the kingdoms? You get all world kingdoms. So what is the devil trying to do? He's trying to, he's trying to get Jesus Christ to jump into the second coming without the first coming. So what is, it, what is our second line of defense? Rightly divide the word Amen. of truth. Yeah. Our first line of defense, whenever you deal with a water dog or J dub or whatever, is watch them, don't add, subtract, or change. Yeah. Yeah. The last J dub I had on my front porch, I said, Hey, could you put in my hand an inspired copy of the Bible? He handed me a New World translation. <laughs> and I said, Oh, I'm kind of surprised you did that. I thought you would have said the original. He said, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. You're right, you're right. So I gave it back. I said, hey, would you put in my hands a perfect inspired copy of the Bible? He said, well, you, you didn't. I said, see, that's the problem I have with your faith. Is everything you believe is based upon your opinion of something you've never seen. I said, now I know you've never studied manuscript evidence, but you need to pray in Jesus' name and go do that. <laughs> that kind of... <laughs> See, I, my method is, I don't like to pop somebody in the nose. I kind of like to take my hand behind the back of their head and... <laughs> <laughs> Who did that? <laughs> That's kind of my method. You know, where if somebody has got an NIV, I don't tell them it's a piece of trash. I say, there's a verse I think it's wonderful. Would you read it for me? And I give them one that I know is missing. <laughs> and they'll say, oh, it's not even in here. I say, oh, it must be a misprint. I give them another one that's missing. Yeah. And the third body, you hit the third one. Now they're mad. They're not mad at me. They're mad because somebody sold them a bill of goods. Yeah. Praise the Lord. I think the Lord says, be wise as a serpent, harmless as yeah. a dove on that one. So if, if my theory is right, our second line of defense is what Paul told Timothy, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman, workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. You know what that J-Dub's doing? It's going door to door. He's talking about the millennial kingdom. Yeah. Yeah. I believe in the millennial kingdom. Yeah. Yeah. What did he do? He took a doctrine from one age and pulled it back. Yeah. If your car engine is out of time, it's going to run rough. Yeah. If it jumps time, it ain't running. Yeah. <laughs> if you take a doctrine from another age and jump time, yeah. you ain't going anywhere. Yeah. You see, that's what the British Israelite is taking Israel doctrines and trying to throw them on a Gentile. They're taking, the devil is so subtle, he takes a truth and pulls it to another age. And that's what he was trying to get the Lord Jesus to do. And of course, the Lord knew the book better than him. Now, if this idea is valid what I just gave you of the problem in Luke 4 is the first message Jesus preached as we keep reading down. He's in Nazareth. Okay, 
he gets the book of Isaiah given to him, verse 17. He reads Isaiah. So if you've not seen this before, if you would go to Isaiah 61, we'll read what Jesus Christ is reading, obviously in English. Yes, I know. But Jesus Christ read a portion of Isaiah 61. So, <clears throat> if rightly dividing is our second line of defense, because these temptations are trying to get Jesus to jump into the second coming without fulfilling the first coming. So, what the devil will do, he'll take a truth of the Old Testament and pull it into the New Testament. And that's what hoodwinks people. Yeah. What well, good Bible? What's the Arminian do? He runs a Matthew 24, yeah. Hebrews 3, Hebrews 6, yeah. Hebrews 10, James 2. Okay. Yeah. Those are all tribulation passages. Amen. See, they're just pulling things out here, pulling things out here, pulling things out. This Bible is written to three groups of people, yeah. Jews, Gentiles, and the church of God. Yeah. And we got to ask ourselves these questions when we're reading, who's talking? Yeah. And to whom is he talking? Yeah. So in Isaiah 61, if you follow along in Isaiah 61, verse 1, and then verse 2, I'll read what Jesus does. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and the recovering of the sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Stop. Period. How did he do? Okay, did he complete verse 2? Why did he stop at the comma? And the day of the vengeance of our God. God will jump a couple thousand years sometimes at a comma, conjunction, or colon, or a period. If if Jesus would have read the rest of verse 2, he could not have said, verse 21 of Luke 8, this day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. Yeah. Couldn't have said that. Yeah. That's why we got to rightly divide the word of truth. Yeah. That is the secret for the New Testament because more revelation has been given by God. Yeah. It's an amazing thing. Now, anybody that grabs a Bible sees about two-thirds in, oh, Old Testament, New Testament. Oh. And only fundamental Baptists. Oh, they're the same in the Old Testament and the New Testament. <laughs> I've been through that. Yeah. No, it's a testament. Now, how do you rightly divide the word of truth? Now, you know, I was raised, uh, Dutch Reformed, got saved. We started a Bible church back in the late 60s. Okay, and... At that time, the new Bibles hadn't gotten in yet. Contemporary music hadn't gotten in. And in our area, those churches were dispensational where the Baptists didn't even know what that word meant. <laughs> and so they were pretty good at that time. Okay, I grew up under some of Clarence Larkin's and Schofield. Now, the flaw of that, I always kind of get, a, I get a tickled about some of these Baptists where... Well, we don't like Ruckman because he's been divorced, remarried. Uh, Schofield? Yeah. Uh, well, he teaches the Old Testament. It's a different plan. Uh, Schofield? Yeah. Same thing. Yeah. Same thing. And so, uh, as far as the, the one flaw in the dispensations of time period, there's a, a slight flaw... It's a good starter, but it can be corrected by the covenants. You see, a time period, you have the dispensation of God in Colossians. There's not a time period called God. Yeah. So that's just a slight flaw. I don't want to throw it all out. I just want to adjust my cultivator so I can get closer to the row. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to throw my cultivator out. No. You know, I'm, I, I kind of feel sometimes maybe God answered Tyndale's prayer because I'm a common plowboy. That's all I am. I'm just a farm kid. That's all I am. I farmed as I pastored one church and had to give up farming, but I was hoping to get to drive the combine this fall. But, you know, my brother got better, so I can't drive the combine. So <laughs> that's how that goes. Okay, so how can we correct that minor flaw is by the covenants. 
So we have two testaments. A covenant and a testament are close. A covenant is an agreement between two or more people. A testament involves family. I don't care about the covenants. I'm in the family. Amen. See, so you got seven covenants, and if you learn those covenants, that becomes the seven pillars of, uh, you could throw that in in Proverbs 9, and that gives us our stability so you don't have to add a word, subtract a word, or change a word. Amen. You know, the first commentary I read uh, of Dr. Ruckman's was Hebrews. Man, I got so excited because I've been dealing with so many of those charismatics out in Colorado. Yeah. And they run me here. <laughs> and when I, yeah. and, and the Baptists don't do any better on that. Yeah. Yeah, Curtis Hudson wrote a little booklet on Hebrews 6, 4 through 6. I thought I was reading Jehovah Witness material. Yeah. The Greek says this and the Greek that and the Greek this and the Greek yeah. that. Oh. I don't know Greek. Yeah. I've eaten at a few restaurants. That's all I know. Yeah, I don't know that stuff. You know, I, the only Hebrew I knew is when I went to Israel a couple of times. You got to watch them, them boogers because they won't they will give you the right change back. Yeah. <laughs> and you got to, oh, right, right. <laughs> But you see, that's not a sin for them because I'm a dog. Yeah, that's right. So that's how they get around that stuff. Yeah. You know, but we got seven covenants in the Bible. And that gives us our stability. Yeah. We don't have to add a word. We don't have to subtract a word. Amen. We don't have to change it. We don't have to run to Hebrew. Uh, yeah. We don't have to go back to the Strong's Concordance and pick one of the choices of what we want. Yeah. Yeah. These people that really say, oh, no, Greek. One of my friends, he gives the Jehovah Witness the Greek New Testament upside down. And he says, could you show me the Greek? He gives it to him upside down and then... Oh, wait a minute. Yeah. These people don't know Greek. Yeah. They're playing a the game of Strong's Concordance. That's all they're doing. Yeah. Anybody can play that game. Yeah. And it makes you look smart. No, really, it makes you look dumb. Yeah, that's right. Amen. So our line of defense, it works on any, anybody, anywhere. Our line of defense, if somebody's going to show me something in the Bible, I want to see it. I want to be fully persuaded of my own mind. If I'm going to go to a shooting range, I'm going to have a gun with me. Yeah, amen. I'd rather shoot in my backyard. Okay, but <laughs> if I'm going to go play basketball, I got a basketball. I bring, I bring one with me. Yeah. Right. If I'm going to go to church, I'm going to have a Bible. Yeah. Amen. All right. Amen. And if somebody's going to go through it, I'm going to watch the wording. Now, granted, you got human error, we mess up, but I'm going to watch the wording. Do they add, subtract, or change? If they do, my flag goes up. Yeah. Amen. If they take something written to a Jew and try to pull that to a Gentile, eh, flag goes up. Yeah. Amen. I'm going to be asking more questions. Yeah. You see, if they're trying to pull something Old Testament, bring in the New Testament, eh, I got a problem with that. Yeah. Amen. You see, rightly dividing the yeah. word. That's why that verse is changed in every new Bible. They take the word study out, and most of them take rightly dividing out. Yeah. Our, that's our line of defense. I don't know yeah. about you, you know, raised on a farm, just a common sense farm kid. You know, I got a little education, you know, but that don't mean much. You know, the school of hard knocks, that's the best school. Yeah. The only problem is you get the test first, the lesson comes later. Yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> rightly dividing the word of truth according to doctrine. When you look at doctrine of the Bible, you look prime. First, all Scripture is given by inspiration, and God is profitable for first and foremost. We look at doctrine, we're looking at it from the heavenly viewpoint down. God gets the blessing out of the doctrine. We get the blessing out of the instruction where you're looking at it from the down up. See? How do you get a blessing out of the, how do we get the second coming? That doctrine. What do you do with it? You believe it. Amen. Back in 1999, there were some Catholics that were tired of waiting for the second coming, so they were going to take some DNA off one of them Catholic relics and plant it in a virgin and try to get Jesus to get born. At 1999, it was called clonejesus.com. What are they doing? You believe doctrine. You obey instructions. 
And God gets the blessing when we believe the doctrine. When we obey the instructions, we get the blessing. So that's how you, you look at both of it. You look at the Bible doctrinally this way, and then you're looking at it this way practically or instructionally this way from our perspective. When you get both of them, that's the balance. And that's how we stay close to the Lord. And if somebody's going to try to deceive us, we just say, whoa, wait, whoa, whoa. Why did you add that word there? I'm not real smart, but I saw that you snuck some water in that verse. (laughs) You actually think two parts of hydrogen and one part oxygen is going to get you to heaven? Man, are you kidding me? No, Jesus Christ saves. These people have to sing, water fellowship, water joy divine, splashing, dunking, an everlasting pool, or something like that. I don't know. So there's the two line of defense. Anybody can do it anywhere. Just sit down with somebody. When you happen to notice that they added a subtractor, just point it out. And if they pulled something out, point that out. And then rest in this beautiful book. Amen. Okay. Amen. What a blessing. we come a long ways to be here to deliver us that. Boy, that's good. I appreciate it. I appreciate a man loves the book. Believes the book. Yeah, that's what we need, the book. 